Hi, this is Crystal from DaughtersOfTheCreator.com and I am doing my usual Sundays at 7 and I'm so thankful for everyone who uh, tunes in on Sundays at 7 but also shares them with friends and family members. It's just been a blessing to uh, read comments and emails from different ones. Um, and uh, just so you know, I don't, I don't always, I can't always get to all the emails, but um, I do try to get to those that um, that I can. So please don't be um, offended by that. But I just uh, want to just send my appreciation uh, today. I want to talk a little bit about God's grace when we need it most. And uh, typically, when I do Sundays at 7, it's based off of what I experience during the week. A lot of times, a lot of times I just look, okay, Crystal, what, uh, hi, Kwanda, what lesson um, do I need to learn or did I learn this week? And it could be from things I did right, but a lot of times, sometimes it's not things I did so right. And so in reflection and prayer and meditation, a lot of Sundays at seven is this. And this past week was uh, pretty, pretty exhausting. Matter of fact, I kind of had a slight migraine today. And I think it's just from the, the stress and the buildup and doing things and getting things done. And not in a bad way. I think just with weather change, sometimes my body just takes a little bit, a minute to catch up with, with itself. But I was just amazed this week at the grace of God. And so I kind of want to share some things with you and I hope it'll bless you and, and that God would be able to use um, some of the things that I'm teaching today to really help stretch and grow your faith. Okay. So the key verse today is second Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine, which is my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. And if you ever get a chance to read that passage, it's basically Paul. Um, we don't know exactly what it was, but he had a thorn in the flesh, something that he prayed three times. God, take it away, take it away. Just get rid of it. And we've all had that, whether it's a sickness, whether it's a situation at work or somebody um, giving us a hard time. It might be a bill, um, but whatever it is, it's just something that you keep saying, God, will you just remove it? And he doesn't all the time. And when he doesn't move it, you know, Paul's like, what's the deal? And, and God answered him, my grace is sufficient. My power is made perfect in weakness. And basically what God's saying is I give you grace and, and then, and, and you can, grace will get you through it. Grace is enough. So what does that mean in our everyday life? And so I did, of course, another acronym with the word grace and, and to just to give an understanding or a deeper, deeper level, because obviously we know that um, for by grace, it is that, that we're saved and not of ourselves. It is a gift of God in Ephesians, I believe, chapter two, verses eight through nine. So we know that if you are saved and you are walking in the salvation and um, the presence of God, it's not because you did everything right. It's, I mean, thank you for the things you do, but that's not why you experience grace. Grace is simply God saying, just because I'm going to show you love, just because, not because of anything you did, but because I love you, I'm going to give it to you. And, and if you're a parent, you know that, you know, there are times we give our kids stuff and we can look at them like, you know, you know, you don't deserve this. You know it, but because we love them, sometimes we do what we do for them, but, and we're flesh, how much more of God. So let me get into this because I think it's really good. Things that grace does for us, right? G is grace gives us renewed strength. And the scripture I'm using is Isaiah 40, 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. And I think I've shared this before in the past, especially, you know, I've shared that I have five children and, um, especially when they were little, like this is my odd year with my kids. So we are 17, 19, 21, 23, 25. And, um, as young adults, um, there is more of a mental and emotional drain on mom. But when they were kids, it was almost purely physical, you know, either they went to sleep at night or they were sick and they're running around the house or they're running outside and where are they at? And you're just, ah, kids. And I just remember, uh, so many times, 
Uh, it'd probably be like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. They're all knocked out. The kitchen is jacked up. Everything is a mess. And I just look at it and I'm like, I can't, I don't have the mental, physical, emotional strength to get this house in order. And I knew it had to be in order because when you have five children, you depend on everything to go timely. And so many times I would just say, God, grace, I just need grace and the strength right now to finish this work. And it was like that when it came to cleaning the house and when the kids got older, they were in so many activities and I was in grad school at the time. And so it was the same thing. I had projects due and things and I would get everything. I'd run to the video or the volleyball games and the football games and the track meets and then get home. And it's like, oh, I've got a 15 page paper to write, you know, and I would just say, God, if you could just give me the strength to complete it. So grace gives us strength gives us renewed strength. So I guarantee you, just try it this week. If you reach a point where you're just like, I'm weak and you know, got to get this thing done for work, got to get this thing done in the home. And you just say, God, would you give me the grace right now to complete it? I can tell you hundred percent of the time, God will come through. He did for me. And I'm, and I'm just ordinary. Seriously. I'm just an ordinary person, ordinary mom. So G is grace gives us renewed strength. R Grace rises us beyond what we can do on our own. And the focus scripture for that is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able, love this scripture, to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us. He's able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us. And I love, let me tell you why I love this scripture. Because there's so many times when I have found myself in a situation where I know I have done everything I know to do. I can't, it's like if I'm trying to write something, I can't write one more word. Um, if it's something for work and I just feel like I've done everything I can do to make this work. And and, and it's just like God says, I am going to rise you above what you think you're able. And I just love that. And I see that so many times, you know, um, last week, I think I told you guys I was studying for a test, finally passed, praise Jesus. But, you know, it was finance and accounting, and it was just so difficult when you're visual and you're more of a word person and you're expressive in words to always grasp your mind around the finance and numbers and, the, and my numbers friends they're just the opposite they can they can wrap their mind around a formula they can figure out how it works and they can go and um and uh and it's just like i just told the lord i'm like I can only go so far. Now, seriously, what I told God is I only need to pass. I don't care if it's like 72, you know, 71 and a half. If I can just pass it by 70, I don't care. And by the grace of God, I was able to pass that test. But again, in my own strength and ability, I don't know if I would have ever passed. It's just was completely out of my normal um, range of abilities. But God, but God. But God, and for you, it might not be a test. It might be something at your work. You know, maybe you're, you're needing a promotion or maybe it's, it's just something with your family. And you're like, I have taken this God to as far as I can go. You know, if you're in a marriage and you feel like I have shared with my spouse as far and as much information as I can. Now, God, you got to push it. You got to give the grace to get it to that next level. He is faithful. He is faithful to do far more abundantly, but we got to expect it and we got to ask for it. You know, the Bible says you don't have because you don't ask. We got to ask, you know, so grace gives us a renewed strength, rises us beyond what we can do on our own. A activates our faith. Okay. So the scripture is second Thessalonians chapter one, verse three. Um, we ought to always give thanks to God for you brothers as it is right because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Second Corinthians or second, the second Thessalonians one, three grace activates our faith. And I can speak to this personally. I mean, I'm telling you five years ago, I remember sitting before a window saying to God, I got nothing I am a stay-at-home mom. I've got nothing. And now there's no job and there's still five children. And five years down the road to see where my life has been. But what happened was God answered small things and it 
and I could see his grace. And so it activated my faith. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And what happened was when I saw God's grace in a small thing, I began to believe him for bigger things. And I just, and again, it's like, you got to know 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 his word because if you know his word then you can speak his word into your situation and i can't tell you how many times i said um isaiah 54 5 for thy maker is thy husband and i call god my capital h husband and i would say husband i got a situation with my children husband i got a situation in my finances or i would remember first uh john 5 14 through 15 that if we ask anything according to his will we know that he hears us and if we know that he hears us we know that he we have what we ask for i used to put that out before god all the time and then um even uh, james 1 5 you know if any of you lack wisdom i mean how many times in my life in the last five years where I would just like, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, hi, Carmen. I think other people think I know what I'm doing, but I don't have a clue. And so why they're looking at me and I'm nodding my head inside, I'm going, I have no clue, Jesus. I have no clue. You're going to have to give me wisdom. Your word says, if I ask, you give it to me generously. And so when we experience the grace of God, when he stretches us and he stretches up or gives us opportunities and we see it, we begin to believe him for more and it activates our faith. And no longer are we just settled with little stuff. We're like, you know what, God, you really could promote me to this position. You know, God, you really could save my children or save my, my spouse. You really can um, use my gifts um, in a greater way for your glory. So grace activates our faith, our faith. C, grace changes our expected and deserved outcome. Our expected and deserved outcome. So I'm, I'm going to elaborate on that, but I want to read 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 16. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I, this is Paul, am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. I know that was a lot to say, but bottom line is, Paul is saying Jesus came to the world to save sinners. And Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, who did these uh, just awesome miracles, you know, of God said, I am the foremost. I am the foremost sinner. And Christ, did, if he did anything, he changed me so that I might display his patience, his perfect patience. And see, the thing about grace, so there's a twofold of grace. There's the... These, there's the expected outcome. Let's say, well, you know, um, this is just what people normally have happened. I just expect it to be this way, you know, and it might be something bad. And it's like, oh, well, you know, I just expect to fail because I'm not as smart as my peers, blah, blah, blah. But God saying grace means, I don't, maybe I go beyond the expected outcome. Maybe God gives me his grace and favor that he changes it where I think this is never going to change and God changes it for the better. And then there's the other part of expect it, but there's deserved, you know, all of us, none of us came into this world saved. None of us um, just automatically like, oh, I just believe Jesus. Jesus had to change us from the inside out. Without Jesus, we would, our deserved outcome, we all deserve death. The wages of sin is death. We deserve death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So grace changes the expected outcome to be better. And grace changed the deserved outcome, which was supposed to be bad, but now is good. Because he just gives it to us. Not because we deserve it, but because of his love. And the last one is E. Grace exposes the favor of God on our lives. And in the scripture I'm using is Proverbs chapter three, um, three through four. Most of us know Proverbs three, five through six, trust in the Lord with all your heart, uh, lean not to your own understanding and all your ways he acknowledge him and he will direct your path. One of my favorite all time scriptures, but three through four says, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. And I see this as, and I just see it, I see it in me, 
and I see it in other people. But can, again, because it's not the grace of God because Crystal's been so good. Because trust me, I know how Crystal is. She doesn't deserve anything. But the thing is, it's the brilliance of God's glory and favor on your life. When you really just set your mind to say, I am going to serve God with all my heart. I'm going to know and practice his word. I'm going to be involved in the service and the fellowship of God, God's people. I'm going to pray and just reach out to God and talk to him. Something changes, not just on the inside, but outside. It's like his favor is on you. And like it was on Joseph and like it was on Daniel and like it was on Jesus when he walked the earth. It's the favor of God. It's just like. It's like you're picked and you're chosen and you're blessed and you didn't do anything. I mean, you did, you did what you need to do. Let's say at work, you just do the job that you're supposed to do. And God says, I'm going to, I'm going to bless them with a promotion. I'm going to bless them with better hours. You know, in your marriage, you know, you just do the right thing. And, and then one day it's just your spouse just starts stepping up and you're like, oh my goodness, why? The favor of God on you, on your children, and on the work that you do. And I just love this because it's not because you earn it. It's because his glory just infiltrates you inside and it shines on the outside. And you remember like when Moses, he would sit before God and the glory of God would be so much on Moses that he had to wear, you know, a covering over his face because his skin literally shone. I couldn't imagine. That would have freaked me out. And I guess it did freak people out. That's why he had to cover up his face. But we might not see physically, you know, your face glistening or anything like that. But there's something about the favor of God and the brilliance of God's glory when you really, and I'm not talking about some weird, you know, crazy thing of, oh, I got to see vision. I, I mean, not to say the visions aren't weird, visions are real, but I'm just saying it doesn't have to be something scary and spooky. It can just be simply taking the time to read his word every day, some of his word, taking the time to pray every single day, taking the time, you know, to commit yourself to fellowship and serving the body of Christ. Something changes inside. And all I'm saying is it's reflected outside of you, whether you realize it or not. So brothers and sisters in Christ, here's how grace got experience. God's grace when you need it most G grace gives you renewed strength R it rises you beyond what you think you can do on your own. A it activates your faith. C, it changes your expected and deserved outcome. And E, it exposes the favor of God on your lives. I just want to encourage you. I mean, sometimes I think we as believers, God has given us a wealth, a wealth of blessing. And sometimes we, you know, because many of us, you know, maybe we struggle financially. We live check by check. We don't feel like we are um, important. We don't feel like, you know, I'm not somebody who's has power in my community. I'm not someone who's, who's significant, you know, and we have to be careful and just say, if we have grace in our lives and, and, and it's like God has this storage room of wealth of grace and we won't even open the door. Because we think, well, I need money and I need power and I need fame. And God's like, all you need is grace. And you can overcome so many trials in your own life. And you can minister to others who have, who are going where you have been. So I just, I don't know, I'm just full. I'm, I'm exhausted. Like I say, my head still hurts. <laughs> but I'm just full of just... Uh, thankfulness because this week was a very impactful week and even though I'm physically feeling some tiredness and some headacheiness but I just sense his um, presence and favor and grace over my life and I want everyone everyone who professes the name of Jesus Christ no matter what globe you you know part of the globe you live on I want you to know it and experience I am going to write this uh, up and it will be um, in a written in one of my video blog or not video blogs but just one of my blogs um, Again, if you haven't already, uh, get on daughtersofthecreator.com. You can get it through Messenger or email. Um, I appreciate everyone who shared with friends, and I just pray, you know, that you would continue to uh, share this website and that God will do it. God, God will just change lives because, honestly, before I even started doing this, I said, Lord, I don't need a 
million people or a thousand people to even look at it. I just need those, Lord, you know, need to hear this word to watch today. So everybody who's watching and, and uh, Carmen and Patricia and everyone, thank you and God bless you. And today and this week, I pray, experience the grace of God on your lives. And um, just thank you so much and have a blessed week. Bye for now, everyone.